Hey Aerie fam, it's Christina Daniels, lead of Aerie Store Experience. And today I'm talking to you about how I live my low waste life, which I've been doing for the last three years. And right now we are about to talk kitchen. The first thing I wanna talk about is packaging. I feel like the kitchen is the biggest area of opportunity. It's what helps create the most waste, unfortunately, because we're always purchasing food because you obviously need food to live. So I always try and prioritize how I purchase my food items. So number one, I will always try and purchase either in no packaging at all or in my own containers. So no packaging at all. You're looking at your produce. You're looking at veggies. So all this stuff in my produce and veggie drawer, I pack it. I purchased in my own produce bag that I will show you guys. These items over here that are in plastic um, were actually items that were on their way out and about to go bad. So these are not as crunchy as they should be. So I will probably use these in like a soup or a stew or freeze them and use them in a soup later on. And I have these really fantastic produce bags here that are just cloth. Um, I have ones that have the tear weight, which I'll explain in a bit on the side. And then I also have saved um, some old snack bags that are reclosable or that someone had or that I had and I will reuse these just like um, Ziploc bags. So there are a lot of places that allow you to fill up your food in your own jars. Um, so I have a local co-op that I found that offers a ton of items in bulk. For instance, this is something that I got in my own jar. I just have some pasta in here and all you do is, it's really easy with mason jars because I have the weight of the memorized, but essentially you only want to pay for the weight of the product and not the jar itself. So typically in these stores, they'll have an area that you can weigh your jar and that's called the tear weight, is the weight of just the jar and the lid itself. And then when you get to the counter, they'll weigh the total and they'll deduct the, the uh, weight of your jar. And then for any product that you're filling the jar with, there's also what's called a PLU, which is how they identify it. So I actually have wax um, pencils that I use and I will write it right on the jar. So I mostly have items that I've gotten in bulk. These are some dehydrated chickpeas that I'll rehydrate, some nuts. Um, and when I can't get items in jars, I will try and go for um, glass. Like this is just some vinegar that's come in glass. I'll get oil in glass or also in cans. Basically anything recyclable. I will treat myself and usually with any grocery trip, um, I'll try and keep 90% package free and then um, treat myself to a few items that are not in eco-friendly packaging. So I'll get myself some chocolate chips, which I can't get in bulk. But when I do have to get something in packaging um, that's plastic, I try and get the largest bag to really make my purchase of the plastic worth it. And then I also have a lot of items like these. This is some arrowroot powder, some confectioner sugar, um, some rice. These were all given to me by people. Uh, they know that I'm really passionate about food waste, so occasionally I'll just have people that bring me in these random items in hopes that I can use it for something. It was actually probably one of the more fun things. Going low waste was learning about those kinds of things and what else I can do with items, as well as making a lot of items myself. So I've gotten into making breads and pickling items, and I actually make some of my own beverages. I have a water keeper which is similar to kombucha, but a little bit lighter. So I have these that I've been making, which has been really cool. And I learned how to do a lot of stuff in the kitchen that I didn't think I could ever learn. Pasta. Pasta is not that hard to make yourself, I also learned. Also, with these scraps that you do have, you can see what you can do with them. So for example, I have this little guy here. This was the butt of a lettuce. And about a week and a half ago, I popped it into the soil and you can see that's about a week and a half's worth of growth. So it's actually looking pretty good. And then uh, once they get to a good length, I will chop the top off, put them in a salad, and then they will regrow again. Green onions are also really easy to regrow. And then herbs are also super, super easy. So if you have herbs and you aren't sure what to do with them, 
there's a lot of herbs that you can dehydrate and then use later on. Another option for keeping herbs fresh is to grab an ice cube tray and cut up the fresh herbs, put them in some olive oil in an ice cube tray, and then you've got fresh little cubes of herbs when you need them for soups and stews. So super convenient, super easy. Um, while we are in here talking storage, this is my fridge. So when you are using jars and freezing, just make sure you're leaving room at the top of the jar and then obviously leave time to thaw it out when it comes time to use it. I still have some of my plastic Tupperware, um, all about using what you have. So I will use these until they are at their last leg of life. The other thing I wanted to mention is this low waste lifestyle took time. I didn't do all of these things immediately. I started small. I started with just bringing my own produce bags to the grocery store and eventually added on more and more and more and slowly converted my house to being more low waste as well. So don't just wake up one day saying you're going to change all of these things. This is a complete lifestyle shift. Um, and it really is a shift in your mentality and understanding what is necessary, what's essential. Again, this looks different for everyone. So it's all about just doing what you can um, and making a difference in whatever way works for you.